Wonderful. Now let's get ready for bout number six. Super waterway contest over six rounds between Fao Mensa from the Panics Boxing Gym and Patty Kujo from the Wisdom Boxing Gym. Officials for this bout, Judge 1, David Mills, Judge 2, Erasmus O, and Judge 3, Nathaniel Obain. Now, shall we welcome the boxer who's going to fight from the Wisdom Boxing Stable from the blue corner, Patrick Kujo. Well, viewers, thank you very much for staying with us. We continue with the bouts for the evening, or should I say the early hours of the morning. Super welterweight contest scheduled for six rounds. Faho Mensa and Patrick Kujo will be joining us in the ring shortly. Faho Mensa fights out of the panics boxing gym. Patrick Kujo will be representing the Wisdom Boxing Gym. Patrick Kujo is in the ring. We'll wait for Faho Mensa of the Panics Boxing Gym. Charge atmosphere here. The Ghana Professional Boxing League has drawn a lot of fans into boxing. Tonight being a special night, we, have the boxer, we had the blue corner. Sarko Dier Patrick passing Kujo. through. The boxer and earlier the on, Fowl. you saw Mansa. Kofi Kinata, who was also in the house. The Ghana Professional Boxing League can only get better as we continue to attract dignitaries from all walks of life. Mohamed Amin Lamte, our ring announcer, will be introducing the two boxers officially. Now, viewers, wherever you are, we're still live on Max TV. Today is week number four of season number two of Ghana Professional Boxing League. We've been honored today by some wonderful personalities. A while ago, we have Sakodie. As we speak now, we have Kofi Kinata in the house with us. We thank God for this wonderful day. It's a beautiful day being dedicated to the, his eminent, the national chief imam of Ghana, Ashek Usman Nuhu Sharabutu. It's 104 years. Now let's get ready for bout number six. And this is a super water with contest over six rounds officials for this bout judge one david mills judge two erasmus O, and judge three nathaniel obain now introducing the box of fighting out from the blue corner this evening sported in the white and black trimmings outfit with the white trunks and white shoe and blue gloves to match this is a boxer with a weight of 152.40 pounds from the wisdom boxing gymnasium under the tutelage of one of the finest boxing trainers in ghana and africa currently he is the trainer of black bombers of ghana coach dr ofura asari presenting to you the boxer with only one fight one defeat presenting to you the man who was born and bred right here in mampro bay the boxer patrick Kujo. Crossing over to the red corner is one of the discoveries 
one of the finest boxers who has been penciled down as a world beta from the Panix Boxing Gymnasium, the boxer who won the best boxer for season one, he has gone through the train of this boxer, Coach Yapoa Emmanuel, Coach Yi. And this is the boxer with the official record of two fights, no defeat, no draw, two wins, two of the wins came by way of knockout with the weight of 131.30 pounds presenting to you the boxer from the Panix Boxing Gymnasium Fowlmanza and the man in charge of this fight is May Mensa Akapo Seasoned referee May Mensa Akako will handle this bout between Faho Mensa and Patrick Kujo. Boxes are ready, officials are ready, judges are at ringside. Any moment from now, it will be the bellman Edward Addo who signals us into round one. There we go. Round one. DJNY. It's another interesting bout. We have a boxer from the Panics Boxing Gym. Don't forget that's where Charles Tete, our winner from last season. We're not ready. The gum shield of uh, Fao Mensa is out. Well, Prince, uh, I'm just beginning to see how this fight is going to turn out to because I just watched the standings of the Ghana Professional Boxing League and uh, it seems to me that Panic's Gym is at a sixth position with six points and Wisdom Gym at the seventh position with also having six points. So these two fighters know what is at stake. They do know what is at stake. Fahou Mensa announcing his presence with two big shots to the head. And then he goes in again. He tries to work the uh, head of uh, his opponent, uh, Patrick Kujo. Portion from May Mensa Akako. Continue with about. Who misses a few of those shots? So does Kujo. Yes, what I've seen so far from Faho Menza is that uh, he throws, and when he throws, you can see that the volume behind that punch is very, very heavy. But I think he should be clinical with his punches. If he is clinical with his punches that he's throwing and land clean on the chin and face of Patrick, it's going to cause a lot of damage. To Patrick but Patrick also looking at him he has the height he has the rich advantage I think the key to victories from Patrick's side is to use the jab and that is going to cause problems to Fahou Mensa. well he's got the longer reach and so he should be able to use it to advantage and uh, from early indications Faho would like to dig in quick clinch there from uh, Faho He looks to be the quicker of the uh, two boxes, Faho Mensa. And might probably want to use that quickness uh, to his advantage. But then again, oh, nearly slipped and went down, Faho. And this is where Patrick Kujo needs to take advantage of. As I said exactly. earlier on, Faho is throwing, but he needs to select his punches very, very well. Some of the punches he throws is so wild and you know when you're fighting with a counter puncher you know what will be coming next to you when you miss like that. This is a wild right. End of round one. 
and like you rightly said and i think i agree patrick pujo should rather be using those long arms of his to his advantage exactly prince and that is something that is gonna worry Fahou Mensa. Fahou is throwing so wild but some of the punches are quite decent landing on the chin and face of Kujo but Kujo needs to make sure he times his punches very well so as Fahou Luke just left there and if that was a fast opponent he would have derailed Fahou Mensa there nothing much to say about in the first round but i think looking at the two fighters if you ask me who got the match better man from round one i would say it's Fahou Mensa trying to be the aggressor but patrick kujo maybe it's early days yet let's see what happens in round two bell goes for the second round this bout is scheduled for six rounds. Super welterweight contest. And there they go again. Sizing up each other. That was a wildness there from Fahou Mensah. And let's see if Patrick Kujo can get advantage of that. That's a word of caution from the referee to Patrick Kujo. And another one to Fahou Mensa too as well. Both boxers needs to be careful. IMAX Boxing Promotions putting these bouts together as part of the uh, Ghana Professional Boxing League. clever way to clinch in the process Fahou Mensa he knows he missed those punch there and the way to do it when you miss that you need to go in for the clinch and I think Patrick Kujo was not liking that trying to frustrate him trying to trade punches there Fahou is at the receiving end and then there's a clinch May Mensa Akaku portions uh, Kuju again from using the elbow. There you see May Mensa Akaku is not too happy about something and issues a stern warning or a stern caution to uh, Fahou Mensa. Now to continue. Fahou Mensa in black. Patrick Kujo in white. Patrick Kujo is not the quickest. But you can see when he starts throwing, he makes sure his timing is on point. But Fahou Mensa is not standing there for Patrick Kujo to land on him. He's always bouncing from here to there. That's making things difficult for Patrick to land, especially he not being the quickest. Tries to work on uh, Kujo's body. Kujo nearly flipped. That was a left hand that glazes on Patrick Kujo, but Patrick Kujo. And that was a right hook from Fahou Mensa. That really rocked Patrick Kujo there. But Patrick brilliantly going for the clinch game. He knows that punch really landed and did damage on him. The bell saved Patrick Kujo on that moment. That was a ferocious punch there. Clearly got him square. It's not been the best of exchanges in terms of the uh, blows. It looked quite awkward at certain times. Fahou trying to use that advantage he has of the speed and there had to stand uh, well and then starts working on the body. 
And that was another one. Not too convinced that uh, Kujo is landing any solid punches. If indeed he is, they don't seem to be taking any effect. Exactly, because uh, that is what uh, Pao Mensah is also growing confidence in. Because he has not really tasted any hefty punch from Round his opponent, three. Patrick Kujo. Round three coming up your way. Let's see if Patrick Kujo can retaliate from that last ending of the round two where Fahou Mensa got that two, three combinations on Patrick Kujo. There he goes again, launching on the body shot of Patrick Kujo. Fahou Mensa on that track again. Kujo trying to use some hefty punches of his to work the body of Fahou. Fahou responds. Missing a few of those punches in the process, but still pinning Kujo. Working on Kujo now. The body punches are coming. Patrick tries to go in for the clinch. Fahou will have none of that. I think there's been some pepped up from Fahou Mensa's corner. And they are telling him, you need to finish up the fight early. You got your man in your pockets. Try as much as possible to finish it up early. A moment earlier, we saw Patrick Kujo at the receiving end. It was all looking good. And he went for the clinch game. In the corner of uh, Faho Mensa, is the man behind the success story of Charles Tete, Coach Yi. He's also been producing some wonderful boxes and uh, Kujo once again at the receiving end. Fahou ducks and avoids trouble. Faho steps forward once again. See if he can catch a combination of punches just before the bell goes for the end of the round. And he starts going at it again. Kujo again not taking the advantage that we thought he could have taken, especially with his uh, heightened reach. And like I said, all the punches uh, from uh, Kujo have not been that convincing. And that power goes in once again. Kujo at the receiving end. And then tries to fight back. Fahou lands one on the head. Clips him again. And then the pressure is on Kujo. He turns the, the tide on the Faho. And then they go in for the break. Ten uh, seconds to uh, end the round. It's been more of a give and take affair. Both, both boxers uh, trying to click each other. Sam. Uh, looks, looks like uh, Kujo, Kujo is fighting the wrong type of fight. He, he should be sticking his jab in the face of George Fowlman's. Uh, I think that that would have kept him at bay but he allows uh, him to come at him and then uh, that, that Kujo allows Fahomisa to come at him and then they go into the infighting game with the infighting game the shorter and the stockier uh, opponent that is uh, George Fahomisa has the advantage he has a shorter reach which is good for those uh, left hooks and right hooks and and those overheads and those are the punches that have stunned um, Kujo over and over again you know whenever uh, 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 Kujo is able to stick out his jabs stick out those left jabs and those straight right hands those have been able to keep a uh, foul Mensa at bay like we saw a few moments ago in the recap but when he allowed foul Mensa to come into him then you know the fight turns against him and uh, he's in all kinds of troubles he has been rocked a few times I mean, a bit surprised that the fight has not ended, ended as at now because uh, very very hefty blows from George Fowler Mensa and Wisdom Jim uh, 
when they were entering into the ring i saw in their entourage one of the most exciting boxes that we've seen in this uh, fight season that is a uh, something jara something jara i like uh, his uh, his ring apparel and his you know his showmanship but it's uh, beginning to uh, excite a few of the uh, fans in the stands the exchanges have been uh, good so far Lots of uh, movement by uh, Faho. And again, he tries to open up. And that's how quick he is. Kucho missing out on uh, the combination. Faho actually walking out of the place. And Prince, uh, Faho means uh, he has quite a diminutive uh, uh, st uh, stature, but uh, you look at the, the, the power in his punches is is quite deceptive uh, you know comparing to his size but then uh, going forward i don't know what you think but uh, this fight is being campaigned at uh, the 154 pound division that is the super water with i doubt if uh, for for uh, for the man from wisdom that is kujo his size is okay but foul means i'm looking at his size uh, campaigning at the 154 pound limit super water with i i don't know what his handlers will think but i in my opinion it would be better if he moved down a bit probably you know welterweight or super lightweight would be okay for his size the man of his stature well he came into the ring at a weight of 151.3 as against patrick kujo's 152.4 yeah so maybe he, he might do himself a favor by moving down if indeed he can and uh, before we go into that there was a gesture uh, 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 a scenario that we missed uh, uh, the corner men of kujo were trying to urge him to attack uh foul Minsa. but foul Minsa signaled to the common uh, to the corner man of kujo to enter the ring and fight him <laughs> if he was a man <laughs> Well, if you know you can do it, why don't you come on in, step in, <laughs> and then we'll have a go at it. Yeah, interesting there from Josh yeah. Valmeza. But we've seen some interesting bouts here tonight. This one turns out to be one of the uh, interesting ones we've seen. I like the explosive nature of uh, Faho. Tries to use it to his uh, advantage. One of the other brilliant fights we saw was uh, John Quay. We have we didn't have enough time to talk about John Quay. I just seen. Uh, matchmaker around the corner so uh it brings to mind what kind of potential that we have when it comes to the local talent and we spoke about this earlier on you made mention of the fact that we should start spreading our tentacles across the borders to see whether we can get some of those solid featherweights to fight the likes of uh, john quay etc etc and from the feelers i'm getting on the ground I am pretty sure that it won't be too long before we have some of the boxers start showing their prowess outside these rings here at the Bukum Boxing Arena. Matchmaker Mubarak is one person who, over the last couple of, uh, well, should I say a year or two, has been able to open up to uh, prospects outside the shores of Ghana. So we've had boxers fight in, in, in the southern part of Africa. We had boxers who've gone elsewhere. And again, and I asked Derek this question earlier on, I'll throw that to you again. What kind of prospects do we have going into the future? How soon? How, how, how ready are they? John Quay says we should give him about a year, probably a year and a half. You have been following their exploits closely. You think a year may be too much to ask? You think in two years he will be ready to shock the rest of the world? Yeah, of course, John Quay has that potential. You look at it, um, the potential of John Quay. If in, in his next couple of fights, he's fighting for the Wabu title, and then from that Wabu title, he might be eligible to fight for either a Commonwealth or an African version of any of the world belt, belt the WBO Africa, the, WB, the, the WBA Pan-African or whatever. From there, 
uh, once you win uh, the African version of any of those uh, sanctioning bodies, you are rated in their top 15. From there, anything could happen. And then it is refreshing news to note that uh, Elvis Ahogan, the man known as uh, the soldier boxer, he has a fight in the Czech Republic. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He's fighting an opponent in the Czech Republic. I have to verify. Very, um, I would verify in an instant yeah, the okay. opponent. And then but he's on the bill tonight. He is on the bill tonight. Yeah. Uh, I'm just hoping that his opponent will not uh, chicken out. Atupika <laughs> Amoga fighting against Elvis uh, Ahoga, the soldier he likes to call himself. And he so, campaigns in the super super middleweight division of yeah. Mr. Hogan. So which means that you're also in the same, you're on the same course uh, as uh, Derek uh, near Sai Ankara. It shouldn't be too long. It shouldn't be too long. Looking at the, you know, the rate of their progression, you know, uh, uh, um, um, one boxer like Elvis Ahogan, he just burst into the scene just last year. And in just one year, he has racked up seven wins, six of those wins by way of KO. He's rated 600 out of 1,400 boxers in that division worldwide. Wow. You know, wow. and he's fighting. And you, like you said, he's got, a, he's got a fight outside the shorts of Ghana in the Czech Republic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so so the prospects are very huge, you know, out there. Well, IMAX Boxing Promotions definitely are on top of the uh, issue, especially with uh, John Quay, since they are the managers of the uh, young boxer. We saw him here last season, season one. We're seeing him here again, season two. I'll cross over to uh, Derek to uh, pick a few thoughts of his, especially on the issue regarding promotions, especially for these young boxers. IMAX Boxing Promotions, without a doubt, has given opportunity to, opportunity to some of these young boxers at least to mount the squared ring. Every fortnight we are here, we are seeing different kinds of boxers. And they are opening our eyes to the kind of potent boxers that we have moving forward. Again, I don't know whether you share the, the thought, the sentiment that... The uh, professional boxing league is definitely a stepping stone towards bigger things to come. Yeah, uh, please, I can't agree with you the more. I, I have said this over and over. Without uh, the professional boxing league, the, the managers and the, the gyms will tell you that they need to spend some huge sums of money before they get a chance to, to fight and sound some bills. The, Thank God IMAX uh, Boxing Promotion has come and they have created a platform. Uh, boxers who hit that too uh, uh, will be just going to the gym to train because they don't have managers, they don't have promoters to help them. Mm. Today, uh, by the kind courtesy of uh, the IMAX Boxing Promotions, all these guys just, just belong to a gym and if you belong to a gym and your weight. Uh, you have the opportunity that your your weight is presented to your team. Yeah. You have the ability to come and also showcase what you have. Boxers like Maule, as you see, I think he has done two already in this season. And uh, today uh, uh, was his uh, uh, third fight already, as young as he is. Again, uh, Kanikwe, he has done two already. Without this opportunity, without this platform, I think that the, uh, all these many boxers that you see, some wouldn't have the opportunity. They will just go and train. If you are not lucky to get a, a, a manager or a promoter who is interested in you, who sees what others do not see, to give you the chance to, to, to sign you on yeah. a contract, you, you, you may not be able to get a chance to find. And you okay. train up to. That is why one major problem of our box, they go, they get to 30, 31 before they get a shot to the world the world stage and they fight four five three years and they are off and then they are off but with this we are seeing 18 19 20 year old taking the, the uh, coming to the league already we know that with this opportunity like uh, my brother rightly uh, stated we have boxers who in a year they have done seven already if they get an opportunity to do five six they are they are 13 already that will give them a chance to fight africa to fight the common word yeah. and then they can they are exposed to the world already sure. so this particular platform is huge and thank god for anybody who brought the idea and they find where the finance is coming from 
the men who are the background and they are working, the GBA, the IMAS uh, uh, family and all. I think that for me, I think it's a big platform. And uh, I think that the other promoters too uh, should, you know, do this at the side at the end of the, at the, end of the uh, year. We, we, we might have 30, 40 fights in a year, which is good, which is positive yep. for mm. Ghana boxing, not not mm. just the GB alone, mm. for the boxers, for the promoters, for the managers. Sure. Because if you are a boxer, you have to fight to build a record to That's get your there. job. That's yeah. your job. You have sure. to fight. So for me, I mean, I must be doing a marvelous, marvelous, big, 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 big job for, for Ghana boxing. I think apart from uh, giving them a pat on the back, I think uh, other individuals such as uh, matchmaker Mubarak, uh, for what he's been able to do, given the exposure to some of the boxers <coughs> as well, it also gives us an opportunity to also get to know what is out there so that we can groom our potentials as we have here. So they can go and fight there win Africa versions of uh, world titles, etc., and then start knocking on the doors, seriously knocking on the doors of stardom. Charles Tete is one of the prospects. John Quay is another of those prospects. And like you rightly said, I am sure there are other prospects dotted around. Elvis Ahoga, we were just given his statistics, ran about 600 out of 1,400 boxes after only fighting for a year, as it were. It tells us that the potentials definitely are there. I'll find time and uh, we'll be bringing uh, Mubarak closer to us so that we find out what kind of systematic planning goes into some of these things. Arrangements for boxers to fight out uh, elsewhere, the exposure that they get. I remember last year, if I'm not mistaken, there was a boxer called Mileji, Mileji. who went to, was it Namibia? Exactly. So imagine that these are opportunities that are coming to local talent here and then they are able to go there and shock africa their name goes into the books obviously the ratings will go high and who knows the next stage is the world okay. so for boxers like faho who is fighting now uh, against kujo and a few others i'm sure the exposure will go a long way to help yeah yeah I, um, praise I'm, I'm, I'm happy you mentioned uh, mubarak i think that he's one of the prospects uh, outside the ring these are people who uh, I do a lot of work out there. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, the, uh, the professional boxing league gave them, birth them, sure. and and today we see them probably to Namibia, to Kenya, and exactly. stuff, stuff, uh, matchmaking for for some of our, 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 our boxers. I know that he with uh, other promoters do um, uh, fight at the Volta yep. region, sure. and Togo, and yes, stuff. I heard about that. Yes, yeah, so so this is what the the professional boxing league. And for somebody like me. I didn't used to, to talk about boxing that much. I didn't used to, to do commentary or boxing. I know Nana too is the same. I know when Nana came and then, then we, we started and we're still learning. If not for for this platform created by uh, uh, IMAS, I mean, where would I have been? Where would Nana have been? So the, the, the opportunities are there. I think we are by this platform a lot is being developed. A lot, a lot. Couldn't agree with you more. Couldn't agree. Oh, thank you very much, Derek, for sharing those thoughts with us. Of Ghana Professional Boxing League, by the Ken Kerensi of Ghana Boxing Authority, Ayamag Boxing Promotions, Premium Motors in all Ghana, for this wonderful package supported by Dano Milk. Nate Coco and Titi Brothers for the refreshment. Wherever you are, you have to patronize the product of all our sponsors to make it a big one. Today, we were very fortunate to be honored by the presence of uh, two wonderful personalities who are the musicians who are here to add value to what we're doing here today. Sakodie and the big man Kofi Kinata. Do you know what? There is another one who has come here with Kofi Kinata. I'll tell you after the verdict. Shall we put our hands together for the two boxes? Then after the verdict, the penultimate bout or the last but one bout of the evening is going to be a super waterweight contest of assistance between Godwin Tete and Vandolf Okra. So we are waiting for the verdicts right about now.
Now, ladies and gentlemen, before the verdict, let me acknowledge the presence of one of the finest footballers, the goalkeepers, the Black Stars of Ghana, and Accra Hassa Folk, as Evra produced, who is here with us from the beginning of night. Fight number one, ladies and gentlemen, shall we please put our hands together and acknowledge the presence of Leonard Moffat. Leonard Moffat now is a pastor based in the United States of America. Shall we put our hands together for our pastor, Leonard Moffat. Thank you very much for coming. Now the verdict. Judge one, David Mills, scored about 59 to 55. Judge Two, Erasmus O scored about 58 to 56. Judge three, Clement Ashon scored about 60 to 54. So by a unanimous point decision presented to you, the boxer. From the red corner, foul. Oh!